very much. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where high scores count for nothing and obscurity counts for everything. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> so, welcome, Nikki and Glyn. You are our first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? Uh, we've been married for 23 years. We met uh, when we joined the police force back, back in 1986. 18, you were both training together? Yeah, you? we were, yeah. Where did you train? We were at Hendon, we joined, joined in London. Is that the only place where you train, or are there, are there, other, are there other police training? Hendon's no, the famous one, isn't it? Yeah, it's, that's the training place for London, but right. you know, each force has its own training place. And where are you now? We're up in uh, Staffordshire now. Staffordshire, very yeah. good. Excellent, well, lovely to have you here. Very Thank best you. of luck this afternoon. Welcome back, Barry and Carl. You were on the show last time. We give everyone two chances to reach the final, and this is your final chance to do that. Remind us how you did. Uh, well, let's be honest, last time we were pretty rubbish. Um, <laughs> two main reasons. I'll take full responsibility. I underestimated Barry's sporting football knowledge. Um, and anyone that knows me, I'm not a very good gambler, and I gambled on my answer. You did. It was a good gamble, though. So I'm playing it nice and safe today. Very good, indeed. <laughs> uh, and welcome, Mark and Marcus. How do you two know each other? Um, we live together, and he's my best friend's partner. Very good. And where are you from? Sheffield. Sheffield. Very good. Well, very best of luck to you this afternoon. Thank you very much. And finally, we welcome Elaine and Chris. How do you two know each other? Hi. Uh, we've been friends for 25 years, and we met through a mutual work colleague. Very good. What do you do for a living? Um, I work in a uh, service and spares sales for a machinery company. Excellent. Elaine, you same area? Uh, no, I work for uh, an airline. Well, I've been there for 26 years. You ground-based or air-based? I am ground-based. Ground-based. Do you prefer that or are you a little bit uh, envious? Yes, I, I think if I had to keep smiling all day long, it'd make my face <laughs> ache. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, very best of luck this afternoon. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. Finally, there's one more person I have to introduce to you. He's the man behind all the facts and figures. He is my pointless friend. He's Richard. <laughs> Richard, how are you? I'm very, very well. How are you? Seldom better. That's good. Uh, good show today. Barry and Carl are our only uh, returning pair. And they were very, very unlucky last time, I think. So I think we might see uh, something better of them today. Always, always good to have police officers on the show as well. Just in case uh, Elaine and Chris kick off. I can see it in their eyes even now. <laughs> they look like trouble. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. Now, we put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless, so we are after the obscure answers that they didn't get. The fewer people who got the answer, the fewer points awarded, the better chance of winning. Now, to stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, our players need to score as few points as they possibly can. But what everyone's looking to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Now, nobody has won the jackpot yet this series, and today we add another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at an unbelievable £7,000. <laughs> right, let's play pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer, and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, guys, your first category this afternoon is... Animals. Animals. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many types of snake as they could. Richard, types of snake. Uh, yes, yeah, quite complicated, this one, so pay attention. The correct answers in this round are all types of snake. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we've got you on hand, Richard. <laughs> right, Nikki and Glyn, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. So, in this round, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers on the board in each pass. The first set of seven answers reads like this. We've got anaconda, boa constrictor, python, coral snake, hognose, angel, king snake. I'll read those once more. Anaconda, boa constrictor, python, coral snake, hognose, angel, king snake. I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but do be careful, there is also at least one incorrect answer amongst the seven. Pick one of those and you will score the maximum of 100 points. Nikki, you're first up. OK. How good are your snakes? <laughs> Um, Did you do snakes at Hendon? <laughs> no, I've never seen you a didn't... snake, apart from in a zoo. Really? Mm. I found a snake's skin in our garden the other day. Uh, that's quite scary. It's about that long. If I'd ever come across the actual snake who left it there, I'll uh, probably shed my own skin. Anyway. 
Nikki, what, yes. what, what are the, what's that list of snakes saying to you? Um, it's saying, be safe. I don't want 100 points here, thank you. So I'm going to go with anaconda, please. You're going to go with anaconda. All right, very good. We were looking for a type of snake. I've been given anaconda by Nikki. Let's see if that's a correct answer. If it is, let's see how many people said it. Anaconda. Not bad. Oh, oh, yeah, like that. Good answer. Only 18 people said anaconda, scoring Nikki and Glyn 18 points. Richard? Yeah, very good answer. One of the world's largest species of snake and a film starring Jennifer Lopez. Very good. OK. Well done, Nikki. Uh, we are looking for types of snake. Carl? I'm going to go very safe today, hopefully, and I'm going to go with python. You're going to go with python. Safe? Hopefully. I'm, I'm guessing, I was about to ask if you, if you were a bit of a snake expert, <laughs> and um, from python, I'm guessing maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing... Not at all. Not really. Don't, don't even like them very much, really. No. Animals at all? Do you like animals? Oh, furry you... ones, yes. Furry ones. Preferably you... with legs. What, what's furry without a leg? <laughs> <laughs> Barry's chin. <laughs> um, right, OK, you're going to go with python. Let's see how many of our 100 people said python. Come on, come on, go down. Come on, go come on, go down. Go down. Go. Okay. <laughs> no, it's, that's better than 100. 54, that scored you, only 54. Well, it's definitely playing it safe, but that's quite a surprisingly low score, I would have thought, for Python. Surely the most famous of the snakes. But uh, originally the Python was a, a fabulous serpent in Greek myth, but now a uh, very real snake. How big's a Python? How big? big? Well, it depends. It's like saying how long's a, literally like saying how long's a piece of string. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a, a small, a small one is about that big. A big one, but bigger than that. <laughs> really? Some of them. <laughs> some of them. They can swallow goats, some of them. Really? Yeah. Goats? And people. No! Yeah. No! <laughs> uh, OK, we are looking for types of snake. 1854, those are our scores so far. Mark, I look at you now, I see a snake expert. <laughs> no. Come on, you Terrified of him. Absolutely terrified. Really? But I'm pretty sure it's a boa constrictor. A boa constrictor. There it is, second on the board. You're pretty sure that's a snake? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said boa constrictor. It's right. <laughs> wow. Okay. 23. <laughs> Only 23 people said boa constrictor. Scores <clears throat> you 23. Yeah. Richard? Yeah, boa constrictor are very good, native to Central and South America, and the female of the species is larger than the male and has a hiss that can be heard 100 metres away. How about that? How about <laughs> that? So, we are looking for types of snake. Chris? Um, I'm going to go for a coral snake. I haven't heard of it, but the, other, the ones I've heard of have gone, so I'm going to choose a coral snake. A coral snake. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Coral snake. It is correct. Look at that. This could go a long way down, I think. <laughs> well done, Chris. That is a pointless answer. It adds 250 quid to today's jackpot, taking our total up to a ridiculous £7,250. Brilliant. And it scores you nothing. It's your coral snake, Richard. Yeah. I was, I was all ready for that to be some kind of fish. Uh, no, it's a or snake. Or eel. It's a ah, snake. It is a snake, yeah. Uh, very well done. There's 65 species of coral snake that uh, they go from the southern states of America down to Argentina. God, they must be massive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's take a look at the other answers uh, on that board. So there's three others there. You know, there's mm. at least one point list. There's at least one uh, incorrect answer. Which do you think is the... Uh, which of those is incorrect, do you think? I, uh, incorrect is probably going to be king snake, isn't it? Do you know the king snake is a real snake? It would have scored you three points. They call it the king snake because it eats other snakes. It's nice, isn't it? Very well done at home if you said hognose because that is uh, a real snake and uh, would have scored you one point. It's got a little upturned nose that it uses for digging and uh, it's uh, completely unvenomous. It plays dead if uh, you attack it. That's its a only... hognose. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, and the angel snake was an incorrect answer. So uh, that would have got you 100 points. Very good indeed. Thank you, Richard. OK, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores. Well, no score over 54. I thought 54 wasn't a bad score there. Carl, I thought you did, you did pretty well. But um, it turns out you, uh, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually way ahead of everyone else. But uh, not so far that everything couldn't change in the next pass. Elaine and Chris uh, did fantastically well with the pointless answer. They should be looking pretty safe and secure, I'd have thought, in the next pass. But uh, yes, Barry, when it comes down to you, you're going to you're gonna have to answer cannily there, I think. Not that you wouldn't. Otherwise, of course. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. We are looking for types of snake. And we have got, in our second pass, copperhead, corn snake, milk snake, pungi, black mamba, cobra, waxy monkey. <laughs> um, let me just read those again. Copperhead, corn snake, milk snake, pungi, black mamba, cobra, waxy monkey. And again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, and there is also at least one incorrect answer among them as well. So do try to avoid those incorrect ones, or you will earn yourself 100 points. Right, Elaine. OK, well, luckily for me, my daughter loves snakes, so we watch a lot of snake programmes. A lot of snake programmes. A lot of snake programmes. Um, so I'm just going to go for a nice, safe one and black mamba. Black mamba. Well, you are currently on naught. Your target is 53. You want to score 53 or less with this answer. There's your red line. If you come below that with black mamba, you are definitely through to the next round. OK, let's see if black mamba is right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Black mamba. <laughs> good enough. Seven people said Black Mamba, that scores you seven, gives you a total of seven. Black Mamba, Richard? Yeah, very good answer. It's a, a venomous African snake. It's not actually black, it's yellowish-grey, the Black Mamba. Interesting. Very good, very good low score. Uh, Marcus. Hello. Marcus. Another snake expert, I can see. Um, I know a bit about one type of snake, but, you know, playing it slightly safe and just take Cobra. You're going to take Cobra? Yeah. OK. You want to score 30 or less with this to avoid becoming the high scorers. OK, there's your red line. If you come below that red line, you're through to the next round. Let's see if it's a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said Cobra. It's right. <laughs> 63. That scores you 63, gives you a total of 86. Richard, Cobra. Uh, yeah, the, the Indian Egyptian co uh, Cobra is what we commonly see used by snake charmers. Responding to the music, although they're deaf. No. They are, they are deaf, yeah. Deaf. All, all they're doing is responding to the, the movement. They're fully deaf. So you can call it what you like. <laughs> Just stay back while you do it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Now, Barry. Yes. You are currently on 54. The high scorers now are Mark and Marcus on 86. You want to be scoring 31 or less with this answer. Now, behind me, look, one, two, three, four, five. Snakes. Look, some of them even called snakes. <laughs> right. How are you feeling about this? Terrible. Really? <laughs> yes. Because the pressure's on me, isn't it? Well, it might be. No, it is. <laughs> it is, because I can feel his eyes bearing into my back. <laughs> Come on, Barry, put us all out of our misery. What is it? Right, I'm going to go for milk snake. OK, milk, sounds delicious, a milk snake. I just had a, <laughs> a strawberry milk snake. Just for <laughs> <one. laughs> um, Right, milk snake. There's your red line. Milk snake gets you down there. If your milk snake brings all the boys to the bar, <laughs> <laughs> you are uh, you are through. Um, okay, let's see if it's Come correct, on. and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Yes, oh, right. Come, Come on. on, go down that line. Oh. Milk Milk Snake, Richard. Milk Snake, as you say, the most venomous of all is the strawberry milk snake. They are only like milkshakes in that they're both very difficult to get through a thin straw. <laughs> <laughs> OK, thank you very much. And bravo, Barry, fantastic answer. Now, Glyn. Yeah. The good news is there is still a pointless answer in there. So they've sort of helped you. I thought Milk Snake was the red herring or the mm -hmm. red and yellow faced herring. <laughs> Throw me now. I thought Copperhead was a spider. 
and I was going to go with everything that's already gone. But I remember back in the 80s, a mate having a corn snake. I think it's about that big, it's about, it's yellow. And they call it a corn snake because it's yellow. So corn snake. Corn snake's delicious with cold milk. <laughs> You're on 18, of course. The high scorers are Mark and Marcus on 86. You want to be scoring 67 or less yeah. with this answer. There's your red line, come below that. And corn snake will see you through to the next round. Let's see if it's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Corn snake. Yes, come on. Right. Keep going. Go Good enough. Go. Well done. Come on. All the way. Oh, really? That scores you 11, takes your total up to 29. Richard? Yeah, very good answer. Corn snakes are the female of the species. The male of the species are crunchy nut corn snakes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. It's not true. Uh, they're commonly found in American cornfields, perfectly harmless, often very long snake found in the USA. Very good answer. Let's take a look at uh, the other answers we've got here. Uh, what do you think, Alexander? There's obviously a point that stood up there. There's obviously an yeah. incorrect answer. Well, you see, Waxy Monkey is a, is a fun name. It's a fun yeah. name for a snake, but um, I think it's wrong. Uh, let's take a look. Waxy yes. Monkey is wrong. It's incorrect. Do you know what, what sort of animal a Waxy Monkey is? Is, is it a monkey? It's a frog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the other two. So, Pungi and Copperhead, which of those is a snake? I think Pungi is a pointless answer. Let's take a look. Oh, Ooh, no. It's called 100 Point Punky. is actually the instrument that a, uh, that a snake charmer uses. So it was a point, that was an incorrect answer. And Copperhead is a, is a type of pit viper. Uh, would have been a, a pointless answer. Very well a done. A pit viper? Copperhead. A pit viper. Pit? Yeah, a pit viper. What, so the dangerous snake breed? That... No, from the, from the Hampshire pit vipers. <laughs> Lovely old English family. <laughs> Thank you very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say, is Mark and Marcus. You see, your, your snake know-how was useless, I have to say. You knew nothing of snakes. <laughs> uh, but such a shame to say goodbye to you. You've only been on for one round. But, of course, you will be back for another shot at this uh, because every couple gets two chances at the pointless final. So hopefully you'll be on for a little bit longer next time. But thank you very much for playing. You've been great contestants. Thank you. <laughs> the remaining three pairs are time for round two. Now, obviously, if there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. Right, the category for round two is... TV comedy. TV comedy. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question is... Comedy catchphrases and their TV shows. Comedy catchphrases and their TV shows. In this round, we're about to show you some popular comedy catchphrases. We give 100 people 100 seconds to tell us which TV shows they are from. Richard? Yeah, we're going to show you six comedy catchphrases. Uh, some of them are quite obvious. Uh, if you go for them, uh, obviously you'll score quite a lot of points. Some of them more obscure. Those will score you the lowest points. If you give us an incorrect answer, however, you'll score 100 points. And at home, see if you can get all six of them. Right, OK, here are the first six. I don't believe it. What's occurring? This is a local shop for local people. You dirty old man. I have a cunning plan. He's from Barcelona. <laughs> giving nothing away. I'll read them all again. I don't believe it. What's occurring? This is a local shop for local people. You dirty old man. I have a cunning plan. He's from Barcelona. Right, Nikki. We're looking for TV shows, the TV shows from which these catchphrases came. OK. How good's your TV comedy knowledge? Uh, not too bad, actually, not thank you. Bad. Better than snakes. Better than snakes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out which one would have probably got the least. There's, a, there's only one I don't really know there, so... Um, OK, I'm going to go for I Have a Cunning Plan. Mm-hmm. I need to tell you where it's from, don't I? It would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Blackadder, Alexander. Thank you very much, Nikki. It's from Blackadder, she says. Let's see if she's right, and if she is, let's see how many people had that answer. <laughs> 35. Cunning Plan scores you 35 points. Richard? Yeah, very good answer. Obviously used by uh, Baldrick, who was the only other character apart from Blackadder to be in every single episode of the series. 
Thank you very much. So, Carl, we are looking for the TV shows that these comedy catchphrases are from. How good's okay. your TV sitcom knowledge? Um, I recognise <coughs> them all. Again, it's which one's going to be the lowest. Right, you are. I'm going to go with this is a local shop for local people. And I believe it's from a League of Gentlemen. OK, League of Gentlemen, local shop for local people. Let's see if that's correct. And if it is, let's see how many people knew the answer. Oh, well, it's on. right. Richard, I think you chose wisely. Local shop scores you four points. Richard? Yep, very good answer. Used, of course, by Edward and Tubbs in their local shop. Apparently based on a, a shop in Rottingdean near Brighton, if you live down there. It's a lovely part of the world, Rottingdean. Yes, Rottingdean. It's not, a, it's not a pretty name, is it? No, it isn't. It's, it's, uh, but it's, it's nice. Very good. Yeah, any, else, any, any other hot spots around there we should be visiting if we're down there? In the Dumpsville area? is lovely. Yeah. Uh, Toiletworth. <laughs> which is lovely, beautiful on the coast just near Bognor, which yeah. is another one. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lovely part of the world. They all sound really definitely worth a detour. Thank you, Richard. Um, well done, Carl. Great answer. Now, Chris, no, do you recognise all of those? No, actually, I don't recognise all of them. Um, I'm going to go for You Dirty Old Man, and I think that's from George and Mildred. OK, Dirty Old Man, from George and Mildred, you are saying. Let's see if that is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said George and Mildred. Ooh, unfortunately, Chris, that's an incorrect answer, which scores you the big 100. <laughs> Richard, dirty old man. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, Harry H. Corbett in um, Steptoe and Son, I'm afraid, filmed in this very studio. No. 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 Yeah. TC1? Yeah. TV Centre? Yeah. How did you know that? Have I you done the that. tour around here? No, I just found some stuff around the back of the, around the, back of the school board. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big, there's a big cart. <laughs> wow. Uh, Shall we go through the, uh, the rest of those? I suspect you know them. I don't believe it. Um, well, um, one from the, no, um, one from the grave, yes. Yeah, one, one from the, from the, the grave. grave. Sorry, that would have scored Wilson. you 46. Uh, he's from Barcelona. Well, 40 Towers. 40 Towers would have scored you uh, surprisingly low 41. Oh, yeah. I'd have thought it scored more than that. And what's occurring? Yeah, excellent. Gavin and Stacey. From, of as you rightly say, Gavin and Stacey would have scored you 12 Only points. 12. Yeah. Well done if you've got all of those at home. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. We have a pretty wide ranging field, all the way from Elaine and Chris, I'm afraid, way ahead on 100 there. Elaine, you're going to have to do the very best you can to find a pointless answer on the next pass. See if you can atone for that. Barry and Carl on four. What a brilliant, brilliant pass from Carl there. I knew it all along. I knew he would. I knew he'd pull it back from the well, show. Don't muck it up on the next pass. That's <laughs> um, all I can say. I'll Barry. Say what you mean. Yeah. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more comedy catchphrases on the board. Here they are. We have got Suit You, Sir. We really want to see those fingers. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Don't panic. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, but no, but yeah, but. Remember, we're looking for the TV shows that those catchphrases come from, and you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Elaine, you are on 100 points. You have to play it very, very carefully here. You've got to hope to score as low as you possibly, possibly can. Well, I know... If a couple of them, but I'm going to go for what I hope is Dad's Army, Don't Panic. You're saying Dad's Army, Don't Panic. Let's see if that is right. If it is, let's see how many people said it. It is correct. 47. That scores you, taking your total up to 147. I'm afraid you'll be leaving us at the end of this round. Richard? It was uh, Corporal Jones, played by Clive Dunn. Don't panic, from Dad's Army. Very good indeed. Thank you, Richard. So, Barry, I'll tell you the good news. The good news is Elaine and Chris are on 147 points. There's no way you can overtake their high score. So you can, you can say what you like here. Good. I have a feeling <laughs> you might. I am really struggling here. I'm going to go with suit you, sir, and that's only because, and I don't think it's right, 
but I'm going to go with, because it's suit, and I'm thinking of Grace Brothers, and, oh, are you being served? You're going to say, are you being served? Suits you, sir. Okay, well, let's see if that's a correct answer, and let's see if it is a correct answer. How many people said it? Suits you, sir. Are you being served? Oh, afraid that is an incorrect answer, which scores you the maximum of 100 points, taking your total to 104. Richard? It's not uh, Are You Being Served, I'm afraid. I can't say what it is, just in case Nicky and Glyn want to go at that, but I shall, uh, I shall reveal all at the end of the round. Very discreet, sir. Uh, Glyn, now, again, the good news is, even if you score 100 points here, you're still through to the head-to-head, -head, so yeah. why not try and find a pointless answer and add a little bit more money to the jackpot? Yeah, and that's it. I know them all apart from one. So, of the least of them, I'll probably go with, we really want to see those fingers, mm -hmm. which is Vic and Bob shooting stars. Very good. We really want to see those fingers. Vic and Bob is what you're going to say. Doesn't matter what you score. There's no red line. You're through to the next round anyhow. But let's see if that's right. And if it is, how many people said it? It's correct. Come on, come on, come on. Richard. Yeah, very good answer. Always said at the beginning of the, the quick fire round in Shooting Stars. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of the board. Alexander, do you know Suit You, sir? Fast Show. Uh, it's from the Fast Show. Yeah, would have scored you 10 points. Uh, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Father Ted. From Father Ted, so by Mrs. Doyle, would have scored you 15. Uh, do you know where Lovely Jubbly is from? Is it from Only Fools and Horses? It is from Only Fools and Horses, would have scored you. 41, and yeah, but no, but yeah, but... A little-known comedy double act Britain. called Little Britain, I think. Little Britain, Something exactly like right. Yeah. Would have scored you 26 points. Mm. Well done if you got all of those at home. Thank you very much, Richard. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score. I'm sorry to say it's Elaine and Chris. Mm. Oh, bad luck, George and Mildred. Sorry. Dear, sorry. oh, dear. Never Did... mind. And Elaine, Dad's Army, not a bad answer at all, but sadly not good enough to, uh, to save your bacon, as it turns out. Such a shame to be saying goodbye to you after just your second round, but, of course, every pair gets two chances to reach our final. So we will see you again for your second chance next time. But thanks so much for playing. Great contestants. <laughs> but the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> so well done, Nicky and Glyn, Barry and Carl. You've made it through to our head-to-head -head round. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £7,250. <laughs> now, you're going head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is to come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. OK, let's play Pointless. <laughs> Right, well, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Monday's child character traits as they could. Monday's child, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any of the character traits attributable to children born on different days in the nursery rhyme, Monday's child. Very good. OK, Nikki and Glyn, because you've played the best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. So we are looking for character traits in Monday's child. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Nicky and Glyn, absolutely certain which one they want to go for. This is good. What's it going to be? Uh, really Friday's child idea, really. is loving and giving. Loving and giving. Yes. And let's hope, correct. <laughs> Hopefully. Let's hope so. Right, Barry and Carl. No, yeah. You don't have to whisper because they've given their answer. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any. Well, oh, no, I can think of two. I can think of two. Well, go with one. Which one do you like? <laughs> Anyone you like. This isn't confirmed, this is telling. Oh, we don't know any answers. <laughs> well, you've got, you've got far to go. Fairer far. face. Fairer face. There you go, you've said it. We'll say fairer face. OK, very good. So we have loving and giving and we have fairer face. Nikki and Glyn said loving and giving. Let's see if that's right. And how many people said it? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. 24. 
and Barry and Carl have said fair of face. Let's see how many people said that. Come on, get down below. Come on, come on, Carl, give some Come on, go on, down below. Oh. After the first question, it is 1-0 to Nikki and Glyn. Richard? Yeah, fair of face, which, of course, is, is Monday's child. It's actually the most popular answer of all. Uh, there were a couple of answers that would have beaten loving and giving. Let's take a look at uh, all seven. Uh, the child who's born on the Sabbath day is Bonnie and Blythe, good and gay. That's a lot to be, isn't it? It's a lot of pressure isn't it? for Sunday's child. A lot child. of an own, a real onus well, on the... If I was born on a Sunday, the way I'd do it, I'd be Bonnie and Blythe during the day, and I'd be good and gay during the evening. That's the way, that's the way I would split that up. Uh, full of woe, which is Wednesday. Loving giving, we've had, of course, which is Friday and won you the, uh, won you the point. Uh, works hard for a living, it's Saturday. Uh, has far to go, that's Thursday. Full of grace, of course, Tuesday and fairer face, as we discovered Monday. Well done if you got all seven. Thank you very much, Richard. OK, 1-0 to Nikki and Glyn. That means, Nikki and Glyn, if you get this, you are straight through to the final. Barry and Carl, if you let them get this, they are straight through to the final. And we say goodbye to you. I don't want to pile too much <laughs> pressure on, but there we are. Here's your second question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many types of triangle as they could. Types of triangle, Richard. Uh, we're looking for the four names given to different types of triangle, depending on their shape and size. There's four different triangles. We're looking for the most obscure. OK, thank you very much. Right, Barry and Carl, this time it's your turn to go first. That'll do. No. Let me, let me, let me, oh, go for it. No. You say then. OK, we're oh. going to need an answer, Barry and Carl. Yeah. I'm struggling to say it, <laughs> right, the word. You say it. No, you say it. I'm not Equal taking the blame. E? I'll say it then. You say it. <laughs> Equilateral. That's Equilateral. It. OK. Equilateral <laughs> triangle from Barry and Carl. Nikki and Glynn. My dad's a maths teacher. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he Hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Her husband hasn't got a clue. So it evens it out. <laughs> I can't think of the four types, but I can think of three. Did he bring his work home with him? Triangles yeah, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a band. Set squares. I'm going to go for scalene. Scalene? <laughs> mm. Wow. Brilliant. <laughs> Never heard of it. <laughs> OK, we have equilateral and we have scalene. Barry and Carl said equilateral. Let's see if it's right and how many people said it. Just to keep you in the game. Two people said equilateral. Nikki and Glynn said scaling. Let's see if that is right. If this wins you the point, you are straight through to the final, and we say goodbye to Barry and Carl. This is a chance to win £7,250 in the final. Scaling. Go on, off you go. Stop! Stop! Oh, yeah, go on. Go on. Oh. Of course, you 20, which means you win the second point. So after only two questions, Nikki and Glynn are through to the final. Richard? Yeah, unlucky Barry and Carl. Scaling was actually the best answer you could have given. Your dad will be very proud indeed. Uh, let's take a look at all four of them. Uh, right at the bottom of the list there, 20 points scaling. That's three unequal sides and three unequal angles. Right angled, any triangle that has a, a right angle in it. Equilateral uh, is uh, three equal sides, three equal angles. And isosceles is two equal sides and two equal angles. And I would like to thank Miss Jenkins of Warden Park School for teaching me that 30 years ago. I still remember it today without looking at my notes. Very good indeed. Well done. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Barry and Carl. Not terrible scores. Fair of face, equilateral. Just not the best. Terrible. No, no, just not the best, that's all. Um, what would you have liked to have come up? Children's books would have been all right. I'd have done that and... Uh... Or um, have a dad as a math teacher would have been ideal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have really helped, wouldn't it? Well done for getting this far, but sadly, only one pair can make it through to our final. It's been fantastic having you on the show, but you just didn't know enough about triangles when it comes down to it. 
all those maths lessons years ago, you should have just paid a little bit more attention. Anyway, great having you on the show. Thanks so much for playing Pointless. <laughs> for the Nicky and Glenn, it's time for our Pointless final and the chance to win £7,250. <laughs> so congratulations, Nicky and Glenn. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted Pointless trophy. <laughs> Many congratulations. That she came for. Now you have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. At the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an unbelievable £7,250. Look at that. <laughs> now, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. Now, we've had one pointless answer on the show today. All you need to do is find one more now to go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options, and they are... Motorsport... Literary greats, R&B divas. Oh, God. Motorsports, what? literary greats, R&B divas. OK. Do you know what? I'm going to have to go for the R&B divas, I think. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> the way, say it again. R&B. Divas. There we go. It's not R&B beavers or divas or anything. <laughs> Reavers. It's R&B divas. I think we, we are. We don't know. Yeah. 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 Alexander, we're going to go for R&B divas. R&B divas it is. OK, well, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Beyoncé Knowles singles <laughs> as they could. Beyoncé Knowles singles. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any single that has uh, been released by Beyoncé Knowles in the UK and has reached the UK top 40. We're not looking for any of her singles with Destiny's Child or any remixes or EPs, but songs where she's featured on another person's song, we will accept. So Beyoncé Knowles singles in the UK top 40. OK, thank you very much. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to do to win that £7,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. I like when I'm going to put a ring on it. What's that called Single Ladies. OK, if I were a book, that's what it is. Crazy. Once she's sung on. Once, once yeah, once she's sung on as well, they've been hit. It's not just Beyonce. Oh, it's once oh shush and think. Um, this crazy. Um, I keep thinking that. Yeah, well, stop thinking oh, of that. Think of others. All right. Um, I'm sure she's been on Black Eyed Peas songs and stuff like that. That uh, Hey Ya, that outcast, 30 seconds. Out outcast one, didn't she? She didn't do that. But, yeah, but he says, he says it's Beyonce. You see, yeah, but she. Uh, but he's mentioned it. It's, well, that that's counts. not a Beyonce single, no, but he, though. Oh, okay. Well, well, shh, I don't know if she's sung shh, in it. Shh, let's just think. Um. Oh, I don't think any of these are called. What's that one called? If you Ten seconds. Put, put a ring on it. It's called All the Single Ladies. Oh, oh, right. single. What? <laughs> it's um, called All the Single Ladies. All right, oh, there is your minute up. No your minute is up. We are looking for three answers from you. Oh, yeah. We wanted to know Beyonce Knowles' singles. We wanted a pointless answer. If you give me three answers, we'll put them to the test and see if any of them are pointless. Right, we can give you three, but I don't know about them being pointless. I, I reckon you could both perform the way you have performed, yeah, yeah. nearly all of them. <laughs> yeah, shake our booty. <laughs> OK. Go on, then. Um, we'll go with our, If I Were a Boy. Yeah. If I That's Were a Boy. That's my favourite, that one. OK. That's a, uh, single Ladies. Single Ladies. And... Um, you said that was crazy, crazy. whatever it's called. Oh, I can't remember. It's a crazy right Crazy now. in Love. Crazy... Is it Crazy in Love? Yeah, or Crazy that, Right Now? It? It's called Crazy in Love. Crazy in Love. Crazy in Love. Yeah. OK, which of those do you reckon is your best shot at a pointless answer? I think if, if I were a if, boy... If, you, if, you, if, if I were a boy, we will put last, then. What yeah. do you think is your least good shot? I think everyone will remember Single Ladies. OK, yeah. so Single Ladies recent, first. Yeah. yeah. Crazy in Love. And if I were a boy, there they are. OK, we were looking for Beyonce Knowles' singles. This is your least confident answer. You only need to find one pointless answer to win that jackpot of £7,250. Let's put your first one to the test. Single ladies. Let's see how many people said single ladies. Everybody. OK, this is your first of three shots at that jackpot. Only one of them needs to be pointless. If one of them is your win. Oh, well, you knew that one wasn't going to win. You no. knew you'd been very surprised if that had been pointless. Yes. Um, OK, so that's your first 
shot, gone. Crazy in love is your second shot at the jackpot. You confident in this one at all? No. No. <laughs> the big song this was. Everybody knows this. It's where Did she anyone, shakes a booty. Anyone we knew that. <laughs> 7,250 quid, what would you do with that? Oh, oh. lots. There you go, yeah. Skiing, holidays, kids' Wasted. holidays, wasted, Wasted. Yeah. We'd have That's a good time, time, though. Very good. <laughs> OK, well, could still be within your reach. We're looking for Beyonce Knowles singles. Let's hope nobody said crazy in love. Down it goes. It's for £7,250. Still going down. Nobody seems to remember it yet. 15. Oh, yeah. So, Crazy in Love is not a pointless answer. Only 15 people remembered that. It was a massive hit. Yeah. If I this were a boy. This is a big hit, though, as well. I'm being a pessimist, Alexander. I don't remember it. Only one way to find out. <clears throat> this is your final chance to win today's jackpot of £7,250. If I were a boy, we were looking for Beyonce Knoll singles. Let's see if it's a correct answer. Obviously, make sure it's that. And if it is correct, let's hope nobody said, if I were a boy. This is your final shot at the jackpot. It's correct. Down it goes. This goes all the way down to zero. You walk away with £7,250. Oh, no! <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that crucial pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot. And that rolls over again to the next show. But you have been fantastic contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. So it's not all bad. <laughs> so, Richard... What were the answers they should have given? Well, there were three pointless answers here that you could have gone for. Uh, some big hits there as well. Let's take a little look. Uh, she had a number three hit with Check On It, which she recorded with Slim Thug. I'm guessing you probably arrested some Slim Thugs in your time, so <laughs> there's a slight clue there. Green Light, also a pointless answer, and her very first solo single, Work It Out, was pointless. Very, very well done, if you've got any of those at home. I'm glad I don't know them. Do you know any of those? I've heard of the last one a little bit. I'm glad I don't know them, yeah, though. Yeah, exactly. Makes it easier, yes. somehow. Yeah. Flash dear, dear. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to Nikki and Glyn. Uh, it's been great having you on the show. Uh, thank you both for playing. Brilliant thank contestants. <laughs> so nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over again, which means on the next show we'll be playing for an unbelievable £8,250. <laughs> Join us next time if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>